Welcome to Cooking from the Cave. I'm Chef Pete Truziak, and today we are making General Tso's Chicken, a favorite in every household. Uh, we're going to first start off with the chicken, whip up some eggs. We're going to do a, a two-step frying method, or I should say batter method, and then we're going to fry the chicken roughly about two to three minutes so that they are completely cooked and they have a golden brown outside. The next step, uh, after whisking the eggs, you're going to add just a little bit of liquid. I may steal some of our uh, stock in here as well. Maybe just one tablespoon. If you're not using stock with this recipe, um, water works too. You just want to thin the eggs out ever so lightly so you can work with those uh, whipped eggs. <clears throat> next step is salt and pepper. I season it twice. I'm going to do a pinch of salt and pepper on the chicken itself. Then I'm going to do it in the flour as well. The reason for that is we're going to take the chicken, go right from this bowl to the eggs to the flour and then into the fryer. A um, few words about that. Make sure you have plenty of room to work. Make sure you keep one hand as your dry hand and one hand as your wet hand. Now what I mean by that is whatever hand I choose for my chicken that will be deemed my wet hand and then my dry hand will be actually the hand that comes with the flour. Make sure I mix it up and then into the uh, oil it goes. So I'm going to stir the chicken up and I've diced up about a pound and a half of chicken breast. You can use thigh meat if you want to. Just want to make sure you get all this, as much of the skin and all the bones out. And drop it into the egg mixture. Don't overcrowd your, uh, your bowls. Just kind of want to get enough in there so there's one good layer. Give it a couple shakes. And then into the flour it's going to go as well. Again, don't overcrowd your flour bowl either. Probably can do four or five pieces at a time in here. Um, if you're using a larger vessel like I am over here with the wok, I can probably stage an area over here so that the chicken, I can get most of the chicken breaded, which I'm going to do, and then I'm going to fry it in maybe two or three batches at a time. So I'm going to continue that, get all of them breaded, and we'll come back and we'll fry. Our next step is, after we have our chicken breaded, is to fry it. Now, whenever you're frying something, you want to start by dropping one or two in there to see if the oil is hot enough. You can use a thermometer if you want to as well. I, I did the test run. The chicken started bubbling up, started caramelizing very nicely, and so I dumped a full batch in there. If you notice about the oil, the oil is obviously boiling around where the chicken is. That's some moisture being released from the uh, the egg, the uh, batter, as well as the chicken into that oil. Gives you a good idea that it's uh, at a good temperature. Roughly, we're right around 350 to 375. I'm using a peanut oil and canola, canola oil blend. Uh, you could use a straight canola oil if you do have peanut allergies as well. And I just want to make sure that nothing is getting stuck to the bottom of the pan. Uh, meaning that there's some uh, chicken that's underneath the first layer that we see there. So I'm going to periodically move them around. But realistically, the oil is going to do all the work for me. I can sit back, wait for this first batch to get done, drop my second batch in, and I'm going to, when I'm done with the first batch, I'm going to lift it out. I'm going to let it dry on either a sheet tray, a broiling pan, something where the oil can drip down. Even a, a paper towel would work great for this. Our second batch of chicken is in there. Our first batch is nice and golden. I'm going to show you how to make the uh, sauce for this wonderful dish. Uh, it's going to entail uh, chicken stock or vegetable stock, cornstarch to help thicken it up. And cornstarch is a great thickener for your uh, your holiday um, for Thanksgiving and or if you're doing a um, need to thicken any sort of pan sauce up. It's something that everyone has it at home. Just whisk it in and as you heat it up it'll thicken up on you. But you also want to, if you can introduce it to the liquid early, it's called a slurry, French term, uh, for basically a thickening sauce. But So we're going to add it to our stock and then we're going to add all of our flavoring to this. So I'm going to add a little uh, rice wine vinegar. 
do is that tartness soy sauce. For the acid and sugar. So we have the tart and we have the sweet here. We have the acid clean together. We really just want to whisk all this together. Let it sit if you possibly can for you know roughly maybe another five ten minutes. The flavors are all going to marry together. I'm going to add about two about about two cloves to three cloves that I've minced up of garlic to this sauce as well. My wife loves garlic, so I'll add a little bit more. Leave this off to the side. And we can check on the chicken while that sits there and all the flavors develop together. Our second batch on our chicken is ready to come out. Just want to make sure any excess oil drips off of it. A little shake. We'll drop it onto our pan over here. Chicken has a beautiful color. Again. And as I'm pulling my, my last batch out, I'm going to go ahead and turn this oil off. And we can now discard the oil. You can strain it if you haven't fried in it before. Just remember what you've cooked in it because anything uh, that you cook in the oil will transfer across into the next dish. And I'm going to get rid of this oil and then we're going to use this wok again to finish our dish. Alright, our next step is to cook the broccoli. And we're going to cook this again in the wok. Try and keep this a one pot type dish. There's a lot of steps but it comes together really great. Um, we're going to steam the broccoli. I'm going to turn the wok up to high heat. Drop the broccoli in. Just give it a little heat there. And now be careful when adding your stock because obviously the wok, the wok is very hot. And if you add it too fast, you can give yourself a steam burn. So I'm trying to stand back on this. And I'll just quickly toss this broccoli back and forth. Roughly added just about a three quarters of a cup to a cup of stock in there. The broccoli is starting to soften up, turning beautifully green. I'm going to add a little bit of salt to this. And when it's all done, we can pull it out and put it on the same tray with our chicken. Go ahead and let that stock continue to simmer away. And I can show you our next steps for this wonderful dish. We're now going to finish the dish and the way I'll do this is I'll start by adding garlic and some green onions to the pan. I'm going to show you how I like to cut the green onions. I'm going to use the whole green onion so I'm going to save the green tops for later. Except of course the ones that fall on the floor. I'm then going to thinly slice the green onion up basically from where it goes yellow to white and we're going to incorporate the green onions, the garlic and I'm going to use a little bit of the microplane in I'm going to microplane some uh, ginger into this as well and I'll show you what I mean by that but whatever residual liquid stock is in the bottom of your pan so if it's water or stock go right ahead add your garlic and your ginger and your green onions to that turn your heat up high so they can start to cook a little bit as well as release a lot of flavor into it into your wok, your microplane and the ginger just go back and forth with it I'm using a, probably a, maybe a half inch of uh, ginger for this recipe uh, roughly you're going to get maybe a tablespoon and a half of ginger but these microplanes are great because as you're doing this you don't see a lot of stuff happening on the one side because it's all underneath there all stuck and all you got to really do is just 
tap the wok once or twice with your microplane and everything falls off. You're going to stir this around in this liquid. It's starting to smell really great in here. I'm going to incorporate some uh, chili peppers. And these I reconstituted in a little bit of stock so they're soft. And when I talk about reconstituting the stock, what I'm doing is I'm uh, letting them sit in hot stock or hot water for roughly about 15 to 30 minutes. You can do that while you're frying the chicken or at least start it before you start breading the chicken maybe. So there's not a lot of work that needs to be done now except finish the dish. I'm going to turn my heat to low. You can add a little bit more stock if you, your uh, wok turn goes dry on you. Alright, I've been sautéing now for roughly about a minute, moving everything around. I'm going to add my sauce. This is the sauce with the cornstarch. Stir up the bottom of the bowl just to make sure that there's no cornstarch left or that's separated from your sauce, your soy sauce and your vinegar. This is starting to smell really good. You'll notice it starts to thicken up on you. Go ahead and drop the rest of my sauce in there. And just sit and watch it, and you'll, you'll notice you start with a very uh, a thin sauce, and it just really starts to tighten up, and that's the cornstarch that's doing that. Our sauce has come to a boil. We're now going to dump in our broccoli as well as our chicken. And I'm going to give it a good stir. That broccoli is nice and bright and green. The chicken really caramelized nicely in that hot oil. And you have a wonderful dish that we're going to serve over some rice. All right, I cooked up some white rice for the base of this dish. And we're just going to slowly pour this in. And you want to get all that sauce in there. The rice is going to really absorb it in. And the green parts of the scallions I've sliced up, sprinkle that on top, put a few around the edge, pull some of the peppers out too for decoration. And there you go, General Tso's Chicken. This is Cooking from the Cave. I'm Chef Pete Truziak. Thank you again for joining us. Hope to see you real soon.